good afternoon and welcome to ZTN News Blitz. My name is Itai Mutinui. Let's take a look at our top stories. COVID-19 widens Zimbabwe's education gap. We will tell you more. Zimbabwe police pursue woman Basha. Mark Ngwazi receives phones and is now on TikTok. And in sport, we give you Msipa's immaculate Spanish move. The pass rate for the 2020 Grade 7 result stands at just over 39%, showing a decline of 9.79% compared to the 2019 group. What is worrying is that rural schools fared badly, with some recording a 0% pass rate. A number of stakeholders in the education sector have attributed the dismal performance by the generality of Grade 7s to effects of COVID-19. Students from rural areas were grounded for the greater part of the year, as they mostly did not have access access to remote learning facilities compared to their urban peers. This is believed to have caused a gap between learners. However, government says it is working on alleviating the problem. Zimbabwe Secretary for Primary and Education, Secondary Education, Tumisang Tabela spoke to ZTN. We are trying to make sure we come up with a robust kind of program, especially for open and distance learning material. The rural learners those who don't have technology-based uh, access to technology-based alternative strategies will do more modules that will be directed at them. But it is again for the whole of government to help us to make sure that each and every school has an enabling environment in terms of technology, in terms of power. Zimbabwe Schools Development Association Secretary General Haveristo Jongwe says all stakeholders should put their heads together. We, we then say that it is important that uh, we, a budget should be, should be drawn uh, for e-learning in, in rural areas, specifically for, 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 the rural, for, for the rural children. And also service providers are supposed to reduce rates for the educational, for educational purposes, be it be in, in the rural or in urban, in urban centers. And, uh, uh, all stakeholders are supposed to be involved in, 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 in the consultation of these uh, policies and, and their implementation. That way, uh, you would find uh, uh, we will not be have uh, problems even when we have uh, future pandemics. Teachers say disparities have always been there and corrective action should be taken urgently. When you look at the rural setting, we still have learners who travel long distances to school. However, in this COVID era, they did not even go to school and they didn't even have access to books. So learners were just sitting at home and just recalled to school to write examinations. Hence, that also gave rise to the uh, low pass rate in rural schools. And uh, again, in urban settings, when you look at uh, the data, in terms of connectivity, it's better in uh, urban settings than it is in rural settings. Educationist and senior lecturer at the University of Zimbabwe's Department of Technical Education, Dr. Peter Kwaira, added his thoughts on the issue. Some of our students in educational fraternity, our social work of life, everywhere. We are still thinking in the old mode. Some of us are still dreaming of uh, how we used to do things, you know, and uh, also being rigid. Now we are talking about examination. Uh, the mode of examination. If we don't think of new ways of new ways of uh, 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 of giving examinations and everything, even the nature of the examination itself, is to, we, we now have to, to really review it. The only problem I'm seeing now is that uh, things are changing so fast that very few of us are able to catch up. Zimbabwe says it will use existing vaccination structures to roll out the COVID-19 vaccine. The country has in the past carried out vaccination programs for diseases such as polio and other childhood illnesses. Health and Child Care Deputy Minister Dr. John Manguiro said structures used to carry out past vaccination programs are still in place and will be used in fighting the novel virus. The preparations that are on the ground are that we already have a structure where we were in, uh, giving the old vaccines like polio, whatever. Those are still in place. We use those structures. But definitely also, we we'll need a bit of uh, data from people. Definitely their names and all that. We we'll also collect blood to see if they already had 
antibodies to this COVID-19 and what will come after the injection of the COVID-19 vaccine. And we also maybe need swabs to see if they already have the disease in their nostrils at that time. So this is a thing that we need to ask people to be ready to give us information about themselves. Meanwhile, Zimbabwe's cabinet is holding its inaugural meeting in Harare. Our correspondent Takuchi Hambakwe gives us more. Good afternoon, Taku. Well, thank you, Itai. I can indeed confirm that Zimbabwe's government is having its first cabinet meeting for 2021 today. The meeting commenced around 9 a.m. And this will be the first meeting without the late Minister for Transport and Infrastructure Development, Joe Bigimatiza, as well as the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade, the late uh, Sibusiso Moyo, who both succumbed to the COVID-19 uh, in January. May their souls rest in peace. We believe that topping the agenda in today's uh, meeting will be the issue of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout in Zimbabwe. There's been a lot of activity in other parts of Africa. In Egypt, inoculation has already started in South Africa there's a lot of research going out there to find out which vaccine has the power uh, to give out the efficacy that the government will be pleased with before they begin inoculation in that country uh, we can also tell you that in the first uh, uh, addressed by President Emerson Mnangagwa. He announced that uh, Russia was donating uh, its, uh, its put Sputnik vaccines to Zimbabwe. And uh, last week, China announced that it was donating about 200,000 uh, vaccines to Zimbabwe as well. So there is a lot of activity around the vaccination uh, agenda that will definitely be taking a uh, tour at the meeting that will be held today. There will be a post-cabinet briefing that will be held later on today we'll be keeping you updated with all the developments that have been discussed at the cabinet meeting back to you thank you very much for that update moving on the world health organization says zimbabwe should immediately start rolling out covid 19 vaccination who country representative dr alex gasasera told zn that priority should be given to high risk groups such as frontline workers the global health body has recommended that countries should start rolling out vaccination within the first 100 days of this year. So the World Health Organization Director General has called for vaccination of the highest uh, risk uh, groups, the high priority groups, which include health workers and uh, social workers whose work puts them at risk uh, for contracting uh, COVID-19 infection, to be uh, this vaccination should start within the first 100 days of 2021. We would be hopeful that the vaccination can start within the shortest time possible, targeting those at highest risk of getting the infection. Harare Magistrate Stanford Mambanje has granted 30,000 Zimbabwe dollars bail to former Public Service Labor and Social Welfare Minister Petronella Kagonye. Kagonye is facing four counts of fraud, one count of theft and one count of criminal abuse of duty as a public officer. The state represented by Michael Reza did not oppose bail. The investigating officer said Kagonye is not a flight risk. She is also breastfeeding a seven-month-old baby. Moving on, police in Zimbabwe are pursuing leads on a man who was captured on video assaulting his wife in a dispute over a cell phone SIM card. The video of the barbaric assault has gone viral on social media, drawing the ire of most Zimbabweans. National Police Spokesperson Assistant Commissioner Paul Nyati said police are seeking any information that may help to identify and arrest the man. <laughs> Mama 
in Mark Ngwazi's Sungura career is not stopping and he cannot blame anyone. He's trusting his journey. His English lyrics on the song Taurai Madzoka are a hit on TikTok and now fans have got him a new phone. In fact, he received two phones. From being a security guard to becoming one of the most sought after Sungura artists, Ngwazi's life is a fairy tale. Last night, he made a debut appearance on ZTN's Garamumba season two. He spoke to our reporter, Brighton Jawi. Mr. Lord Gibo, I remember what I was in Panos, I don't say. 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 I Introducing the COVID funeral plan from Doves. This policy covers death from COVID-19 or COVID-19 related funerals. The Doves COVID funeral plan is effective immediately with no waiting period. For more information, please contact 0731-772-784-0731-772-782. WhatsApp 0731-750-989. Email Call center at doves.co.zw. Visit our website www.doves.co.zw or visit the Doves Holdings Facebook page. Doves for the ones you love. We now move to regional and international news. South Africa's Department of Basic Education has released a new school calendar which will give schools 40 weeks of learning and teaching this year. The first term, which starts on Monday, will end on the 23rd of April, while the second term will run from the 3rd of May to the 9th of July. The final term is scheduled to start on the 11th of October and end on the 15th of December. The reopening of schools in the country had been delayed due to rising COVID. COVID-19 infections. Health officials in the Democratic Republic of Congo have started tracing those who came in contact with a patient who died from Ebola. The 42-year-old woman died last Wednesday in North Kivu province, just two days after developing symptoms of the disease. The World Health Organization has already identified more than 70 contact cases of the disease. The country had three months ago declared the end of its 11th Ebola outbreak that killed 55 people. World Health Organization Chief Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus says the emergence of new coronavirus variants has raised major questions on whether currently available vaccines will be effective against them. He said this a day after South Africa temporarily suspended rollout of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Studies by South African health officials revealed that the vaccine reduced protection against the new variant. Tedros described the development as concerning news, adding that the results are a reminder that countries need to do everything to reduce circulation of the virus with proven public health measures. Coming up is sports news. Did you know that you can now get Dove's funeral cover from the comfort of your home? Simply visit our social media platforms, Facebook page, Doves Holdings. Visit our website, www.doves.co.zw. Email call center at doves.co.zw. So get your Doves funeral cover from anywhere you are with no hustles and no need to travel. Only with Doves. Doves for the ones you love. It is a move that has been long overdue. Mighty Warriors captain Immaculate Msipa will finally get the chance to play alongside the world's top players. She speaks to ZTN Sport about the journey which has taken her to Spain to play for the Juventud Almasora. I'm really happy. I'm excited. Uh, and I'm out of faith. Uh, I just want to uh, give thanks to the Lord. Dimari Azarora Suwe. And I just want to give thanks to Black Rhino Spins for everything that they did to me in terms of football. And I just want to thank, uh, give thanks to the national team, Mike Warriors. 
Has talent Shawapiwa failed to reach his full potential? That is a question the Zimbabwe and Amazulu winger must answer when African qualifiers resume in March, first against Botswana and then Zambia. Chawapiwa could be key at a time when Kamabiliati is now far from his best. The former FC Platinum winger is happy at Amazulu, but that alone won't cut it. He agrees that must show up for the Warriors. I would love, you know, to, to come back and play for, for my national team. It's a bigger level. Playing for your national team, it's, it's a huge honor. I would love to, you know, my last wish is to, to qualify for World Cup, you know. I, I hope it will come to pass one day with a couple of players that we have now because this generation that we have now is it's a great generation. Uh, about the, the, the finishing of the top four and top eight this season is promising. You know, it's promising. You can tell the way we started this season is different from the way we, we usually start. You know, we usually start when we are bottom there. But now this season, you know, it's looking sharp. FC Platinum and ASC Giraffe will be keeping their fingers crossed that key players will not be ruled out after COVID-19 tests. Giraffe, who are expected in Arare today for the CAF Confederation Cup playoffs, first leg tie will be required to undergo tests again before the shutdown on Sunday. Zimbabwe champions FC Platinum, who missed five players against Simba SC after they tested positive for the coronavirus, will also not be spared. They will be keeping tabs on on that one. Now moving on, test opener Prince Masaure and comeback, comeback kid Tari Musakanda have shown great form in the Chevron's warm-up match at Old Hararians yesterday at Stamps. Masaure was unbeaten on 133 while Musakanda made 111 in the four-day match. The squad is divided into two teams the Northerns and the Southerns. Zimbabwe is preparing for two tests and three T20 internationals against Afghanistan in the United Arab Emirates next month. Meanwhile, Ireland's limited overs tour of Zimbabwe has been postponed. Zimbabwe Cricket informed their Irish counterparts that the tour could not go ahead because of the COVID-19 situation in the country. And that's all we had for you on ZTN News Blitz. Thank you for watching.